Hello everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com. I'm back today with the tutorial for the fringe earrings I shared that I created from the February 2021 bargain bead box. In addition to contents found in that box, I'm also using three different colors of the size 11 O Miyuki Delica beads. You can also pull any 11 O seed beads from your stash. Those will work too. You don't have to have those in particular. From the box, I'm using the teeny tiny two millimeter Appetite gemstone rounds. These antique copper drops will be hanging down at the bottom. And then this is the chandelier earring component I'll be using. We're gonna brick stitch onto this first and then add our fringe. I also have a lever back style earring finding from my stash, but you can use any type of earring finding you'd like. I'll also be using some four pound black satin fire line today. This is the 0.005 inch diameter. It's a little bit thinner than the six pound. And I'll be using a size 12 beading needle today because we're gonna be going through these really delicate appetite beads and they are pretty soft. So it's easy to crack the bead, especially with doing two passes through them. So that should help. And of course, we'll need a pair of scissors and you might want some jewelry pliers to attach your ear wires. I'll leave the full list of materials down below that I'm using. Of course, you don't have to be a subscriber to the Bargain Bead Box. You can find these types of items lots of different places. So I'll leave links as well in the materials section. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my workspace and then we will jump into this tutorial. This tutorial begins with one color of the Delica seed beads. I have the copper here to start off with that we will be brick stitching onto this component. This component has nine different loops, but we're actually gonna be brick stitching on 11 beads. And that way we'll have a nice full fringe earring that will extend out a little bit past the edges of this component. I do have a separate tutorial just on how to brick stitch onto a round type of component. This is very similar, this process. So you'll pretty much learn how to do that with this tutorial. So first take the component in your hand and pick up one of your seed beads. And then we're just gonna go through the first hole of this component. I'm just holding it against my index finger. I'm gonna leave about a six inch tail or so, something we can leave back in later, it doesn't have to be quite that long. And you can see right now I have the bead sitting on the other side of the component, my thread's coming through that first hole. We're just gonna take our needle and we're gonna go up through the bead from this side. And you'll wanna hold on to the bead and thread while you're doing that, the piece of tail thread. And basically what happens when you pull this is you end up with your bead sitting right on top of the component, but also attached with one little loop down there and your thread is coming out of the top of that seed bead. Now we're in position to add our next one. So I'm gonna pick one up and this time I'm actually gonna go through the same hole on the component. So this one will have two beads attached to it because like I said, we're doing more beads than we have loops. So now that I'm coming out of the loop of the component, I wanna go up through the seed bead that we just added and pull. When you pull all this together, including the tail thread, you can see these are sitting next to each other side by side. Something I like to do just to give some extra security once I have the first two beads on, I just wanna go down through the first bead we added and I'm gonna come back up through the next bead. So that didn't add any extra loops down here. You really don't see that thread at all. We just have one loop per bead. So it looks nice and neat. And now we're still in position to add our next bead. So we're picking up a Delica coming through the second hole this time from behind the component, pulling while that bead sits there next to my index finger. And then I'm just gonna go up through the bead we just added and pull and that one sits right next to the other two. And you're just gonna repeat this all the way down and I'm doing one bead per hole at this point. Pull nice and tight, get them all sitting next to each other, pick up another, go through the next hole and pull.
I see that the beads are starting to get to the point where I feel like I could add another one on top of this hole. So I'm actually going to pick up another seed bead and go through the hole there again with another bead and pull and then continue on with three more seed beads, one in each of these remaining loops. So now we have our 11 beads brick stitched onto this component. I have my tail thread on this side, my working thread over here, and I like to get my tail thread out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and pop a needle onto this and weave it back in. The way I'm going to do that is just by going back down and up through some of these beads, not going through the component at all. So you really won't see the thread. It's just going to hide that inside this row of brick stitch. And then I'm going to clip this off and we will begin with our fringe. All right, now we'll be working with all of our beads and also the drops. And I have mine laid out in the order that I'm going to be using them even with the copper showing up twice just to help me kind of move from left to right down each row of fringe. We're going to also start out with our smallest strand, which is going to be on this side, and we're working towards the longest one, which will be in the middle, and then they'll just get shorter again, mirroring what we already did on this side. So with the first one, the shortest strand, I am going to pick up a copper, just one, I'm going to pick up five turquoise. I'll go ahead and string those down. And I'm going to pick up seven of these little gemstones. And they're so delicate. So I'm going to be very careful. All right, those seven are on. So here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to pick up one of the aqua and five more copper and pull those down. And then we're going to pick up one of these drops that's going to sit on the end of each of these fringe strands. And we're just going to go back up through all of these beads till we get to the top coming out of the brick stitch. So just backtrack through all these beads, make sure you don't miss any of them. And if you're using these little appetite gemstones, be especially gentle because I ended up cracking some beads as I made the first pair. And then I had to redo some strands and that's not fun. So go through all of the beads one at a time and come out of the copper delica or seed bead that you're using on the very top of the brick stitch section. Something else you can do if you are concerned about keeping your tension tight as you go across your fringe is you can go around the thread that sits between the component and that first delica and you can make a little half hitch knot right there and tighten that up to your beads and that will help keep the tension the way it is on that strand and kind of keep that tension as you go. So you can do that at the end of each strand as you come up through the brick stitch. All right, now going down through the next delica, Let's string on our next beads. This is going to be a little bit longer, so we're going to pick up this time two coppers. And we're going to still do five turquoise. And I'll string those down. We're still going to do seven of these gemstone beads. Pull those down. This time we'll pick up two aqua. 
and still five more copper. And you can go ahead and pick up your next drop if you want to. Pull all that down. And once again, you'll be returning through all of those beads one at a time. So take your time, make sure you don't miss any. And be careful as you go through the gemstones. And return up and out of that second seed bead in your brick stitch. Pull. I like to set this down and just pull gently and make sure the fringe will be able to stay straight and there's no gaps and I'm not pulling so tight that it's starting to sit strange. And at this point, if you want, you can go around that thread at the top of the brick stitch, make a little half hitch knot, and pull gently and keep your tension that way as you go. So we have two strands done. And again, we're gonna go down through the third bead in our brick stitch, the very next one. This strand will get longer once again. And basically what we're doing is we're increasing the number of copper delicas here at the top of the fringe and also increasing the number of these aqua delica beads. That's how I'm getting that chevron type pattern. It's gonna keep making each strand just a little bit longer than the first on either side. So with this third one, this time we're gonna pick up five copper seed beads. And still keeping with the five turquoise. Still keeping with the seven gemstone beads. Let's pick up three aquas, five coppers, our next drop, pull that all down. And then we'll return through all of these beads. We'll head up through the third bead on the brick stitch. Set that down, hold that while I pull it gently. And I'm gonna make a little half hitch knot. Setting that down, just straightening everything out as I tighten lightly. And then we'll head down the fourth bead. This time we'll pick up seven coppers to start, then five turquoise. Seven of our gemstone beads. This time let's pick up five aqua and five copper and our last drop. And we'll return through all of these beads again. And then my knot. And we'll head down bead number five. And we'll start this one out by picking up nine coppers, five turquoise, our seven appetite beads. This time pick up seven aqua We'll do our five copper and our final drop. And if you want, 
make a little half hitch knot before you proceed down your six bead. Now that we've arrived at our sixth strand, we're coming out of that seed bead. We are at our middle and longest strand of this grouping. So we're gonna start out with this time 11 copper seed beads and five turquoise as usual. And another tip I have for you is as you go, before you begin a new piece of fringe and make any kind of knot or anything, just double check your rows, your fringe, and make sure that you have counted the beads accurately because even one bead off can be super frustrating when you discover that after you think you're done. And again with our seven gemstone beads, this time we'll do nine aquas, our five coppers, and our last loop. All right, so now that I'm done with that middle piece, I'll be making my little half hitch knot going down the seventh bead in the brick stitch row and just going from the largest strand that's next to this one to the smallest, just mirroring everything we just did. Once you get to this side, after you've completed the shortest piece of fringe, we'll meet back and finish up our earring and admire our work. All right, everyone, welcome back. I hope your earring is turning out great. I am at my last piece of fringe and coming out of this final Delica here up out of the seed bead. And so I'm going to make a little half hitch knot right there. And then I'm just gonna weave my thread down and up through just the top Delica beads. You don't have to go through all of them, but you can if you want. And then what you can do is clip off your thread and attach your ear wire. So go through some of those just to weave your thread back in carefully. And I do want to point out originally, I did have two of these little Delica beads, the copper ones, on the second shortest piece of fringe initially, but I noticed when I had finished up, I actually had added three, so I had to go back and add another one to that top section. If you're wondering why I have three copper seed beads here, or Delicas, instead of just two now. So that was just something I had to fix. All right, now I'm just going to add my earring finding. I'll twist this component open a little bit, enough so I can get this placed onto that loop and I'll close it up, twist it back just like that. And there are the two beautiful fringe earrings from the contents of the February 2021 Bargain Bee Box. Again, you don't have to be a subscriber to that box to make this and I did add the seed beads from my own stash as well as the ear wires. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how I went about making these with the brick stitch at the top of the component and then the fringe hanging down. You can definitely use this technique in a variety of ways and change it up in so many different ways as well. So have fun with it. Once again, I will leave the full materials list down below as well as links to where you can find these products or very similar products as well as the link to the bargain bead box and a coupon code for that if you're interested in signing up for it. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you gave these a try or anything else you'd like to say. And feel free to give this video a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And you can hit that subscribe button as well while you're here so you can be notified of when I'm posting new content. I wanna thank you all so much for being with me. I will see you again real soon. And in the meantime, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beating.